everybody, this is Karen Kahn with Girl Scouts of Kentucky's Wilderness Road and I'm a membership specialist out of the Ashland office and today we're going to be doing a virtual program for the Brownie Hiker Badge, one of my favorites. Uh, doesn't have to be just you brownies watching. Any girl of any age and your families can be tuning in for this. But we're going to explore the five steps to earning the Brownie Hiker Badge. And we're going to get started right away. Um, if you are, want to share any of your hiking experiences or anything we talk about, um, any feedback you want to give, be sure to use the hashtag Kentucky Girl Scouts or hashtag Kentucky Girl Scouts at home. All right, let's get started. So the first step to earning your Brownie Hiker badge is deciding where to go. We're here at Carter Cave State Resort Park. And as you can see, there are so many hiking trails to choose from. Now, although as a second or third grader uh, and being a Brownie, you'll probably want to you know, discuss this with the adults in your home or your, if you're getting to go on a hike later with your troop, this would some, be something that the your parents and the troop leader would also be making a decision on. But maybe you have some certain features you want to see on the hike, like maybe you're really into neat rock formations or you want to hike to a waterfall. Uh, this would be something you would talk about in deciding where you want to go. Also, you may want to consider the length of the trail. So today we're going to be doing the Box Canyon Trail at Carter Caves. This is a shorter trail here, so this is a good beginner trail. It's 0.8 miles, and even though it's short, it is a little bit challenging. As you'll see, we'll get a preview of the trail here in a little bit, and um, there are some rocky sections and some uphill sections, but it's not too long or strenuous, so if you haven't done a lot of hiking before, this is a good one to get started with. So that's part of how you'll decide, you know, what trail you're going to pick and maybe deciding on the location. Um, hold on just a moment, we've got some background noise here. Pause for a moment. I can edit this All right. <laughs> Okay, I think he's gone now. So to continue, um, part of deciding where to go is considering how you're gonna leave no trace. So you're gonna wanna plan ahead. Um, when you go out on the trail here, you're gonna make sure to stay on the trail, uh, that you respect wildlife, that you carry out anything you carry in, and also uh, consider other hikers too. Right now, it looks like we're the only people here so far. We've had some cars um, go in and out of the parking lot, uh, but we may have the trail to ourselves this, today. So, um, but if we do come across any other visitors, we'll be sure to um, give them enough space. So now, let's see, we've planned and decided where we're gonna go. So the next step, step number two, for Brownie Hiker Badge is while we're here, let's try out a new skill. So a hiking skill would be something like trailblazing. And that means you are in charge of making sure you follow the directions on the map and you're paying attention for, you know, trail markers. Uh, maybe the trail is marked by certain color blazes. This trail, the Box Canyon Trail, is marked by orange blazes. Um, so that's what we're going to keep an eye out for uh, and other skills you can take on uh, as you earn your brownie hiker badge could be something like uh, being the plant detective uh, maybe you keep notes about the different plants you see or if you have a camera or you can use someone's phone you can snap pictures of the different plants you come across like flowers and trees and so forth or maybe you're really into bugs I'm sure we'll see a lot of different bugs coming out. It's that time of year. Hope <laughs> So yeah, bug detective, um, animal detective, you can maybe bird watcher if you bring some binoculars. Uh, there are several different skills you can take on uh, on your hike for brownie hiker badge. And picking the right gear. So here with me, I've got a backpack, which is a little bit you know, beefier, a little bit bigger than what we would need for uh, 
a hike of less than a mile. This is, yeah, a 0.8 mile hike that we're going to be going on today. Um, but I would say this day pack could probably accommodate a trail up to probably seven or eight miles. Anything that you can do within a day, depending on, you know, the terrain and um, if your familiarity with the area as well. So in addition to the backpack itself, you're going to be packing other items as well. So one of the most important things is a bottle of water. You always want to have enough water on hand. Um, if this was a longer hike, like something seven or eight miles, I might bring one of those bladders. This backpack has a compartment here to hold the bladder and um, the, the, a bladder is like a, kind of like a big plastic thing that holds water and there's like a tube almost like a like you would uh, if you were you know, doing scuba or something and you like a big straw and <laughs> you get a drink out of that um, but today for a short hike I'm just gonna carry a bottle of water other items um, it, there isn't rain in the forecast today, but um, it is a little overcast, so I did bring a rain jacket, just a lightweight rain jacket. The temperature today is actually pretty comfortable. It's about 60 degrees. So for 60 degrees, you probably want long pants, cover your legs, uh, maybe dress in layers with like a tank top or t-shirt on with a long sleeve shirt on over that. Um, hiking boots are really important. Um, if you don't wear hiking boots, then maybe making sure your tennis shoes have really good tread on them. Um, this is all part of choosing the right gear. Um, other things to bring along would be stuff like bug repellent. And it's the time of year, yeah, you really want to bring rug bug repellent. Um, if it was a cooler time of the year, you might want something like hand warmers. I even have toe warmers with me. These are just little things I keep in my backpack year round. Um, it, you're hiking, you know, when it's a little bit cooler out. Let's see. Wipes are a really good thing to pack with you too when you're hiking. You get really muddy or you need to wipe something off, off of yourself. Uh, let's see. If you're taking notes about anything you see, bringing a little notebook can be helpful and a pen to take any notes. And I've got a flashlight, chapstick, I've got hand sanitizer. So if you cut yourself, which, or something like that, like if you fall and scrape your knee or scratch your hand on something, sanitize your hand and hopefully you've packed a little first aid kit and inside it you're going to want to pack items like band-aids maybe say an antibiotic ointment um, if you come across something that makes you itchy some like hydrocortisone creams really good um, some antibacterial wipes um, you can even put medicine in there like Tylenol if your head hurts or Pepto-Bismol if you get a belly ache uh, let's see what else we got in here. It looks like if you get a blister, moleskin. Moleskin will help you out with a, a blister. But um, also to prevent blisters, make sure you wear really good socks and really well cushioned shoes like a hiking boot or a trail running shoe. Okay, so that's all part of picking the right gear for your hike. So the next step, this is my favorite step other than the actual hike itself. So, move this map out of the way. You gotta pack a snack for energy. Now, there are a lot of different snacks. I like, I like a variety. Now for a short hike like this, we're not going to probably eat on the trail, but I bet after we do this little hike, be a little bit hungry and if you take a longer hike maybe you want to sit down halfway and have lunch that's always a great idea um, one of one of our favorites trail mix and I've got a blend of pumpkin seeds almonds pieces of mango and dried cherries in my trail mix today uh, pretzels for something salty 
got a couple of granola and inner granola bar and energy bar a pack of raisins peanut butter an apple anything like that um, it's good to have a combination of something with protein like peanut butter and carbohydrates like fruit so yeah, make sure you you're packing snacks for energy and fruit and nuts are always a good place to start so let's put everything back in the backpack so we're ready to go rain jacket just in case. I don't think it's supposed to rain today, but we'll be ready in case it does. Okay, so that last step, step five, go on your hike. So we're going to load up, lock the car, and we'll get started. We'll just do a preview of this trail. I think I don't think we're gonna have enough time for the entire trail today, but um, if you're trailblazing on the trail, one of the things you're gonna be looking for is trailblazes like that orange blaze there. And here's another one. flowers and trees along the way. And if you look more carefully, maybe if you're playing bug detective today, maybe you can find a bug or two. I know when we get up here where all the rocks are, you'll probably be able to find a thing or two. Now, other things you can do while you're on your hike is you can go on a scavenger hunt. There are a lot, a lot of different scavenger hunt ideas to choose from, especially places like Pinterest. And some of them are themed, like with different colors, or maybe you come across, I don't know, just a, a photo sca scavenger hunt is another good one where you use either a phone or if you have a camera and you just snap pictures of the different things that are uh, listed on that scavenger hunt. And you can play a game of I Spy. Like right now, you can see a lot of things are green right now, but if you have a, some yellow flowers up here, you can say I Spy something yellow, and then whoever was in your group would have to guess what that was. And sometimes when I'm hiking, especially if I just need a good stretch, you can be inspired by nature around you and maybe you just want to strike a yoga pose. So let's say you're coming up on the hill or maybe you're doing a big hike and you're actually hiking up a mountain and you take a moment to pause here and find your mountain. Or maybe you look at the trees around you and you're like, I can do a tree, I could be a tree too. And you find your tree pose. So a lot of different things you can do. And if you're tired, Hey, just take a moment to sit and observe. You brought that little notebook with you. You can take some notes. So anyway, let's go back this way. I think we went through. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been out here. I made a wrong turn. It wasn't being my usual trailblazer. So let's keep moving. This uh, Box Canyon Trail actually really close to uh, Cascade Cave and Cascade Cave is one of the well-known caves out here at Carter Cave 
and they regularly do cave tours out here. And we were actually on the path to head toward uh, one of the cave entrances, but that's for another day. <laughs> we'll just hike in today. your favorite places to hike or where are some places that you've wanted to hike before? I think I mentioned before, Carter Caves has a lot of different trails. Uh, Box Canyon just being one of many. If you're looking for a really nice, yeah, here we are, here's, the, here's my sign. So if you were a good trailblazer <laughs> and you were paying attention, you would have been looking for this trailhead right right here. And as you see, as we come up the hill, we're going to find some orange blazes letting us know we're going in the right direction. But uh, another one of my favorites here at Carter Caves is the Three Bridges Trail. Uh, that one's about three and a half miles. And it's called the Three Bridges Trail because there are three beautiful arches um, along the way there's and there are also like natural bridges in a, in a sense as you can walk over them so if you're really into seeing different rock formations uh, that's one I highly recommend and you can complete that one in about two hours at a moderate pace There's some longer ones too, if you even wanted to try your hand at backpacking as you've become a more experienced hiker, there's a really nice trail here with a backpacking um, campsite about halfway through the trail. And it can be hiked in one day as well, uh, but I'd recommend that one to more experienced hikers, that one's the 4 C trail stands for Carter Caves Cross Country. And you'll see some, oh, look, plant detective. Check out that wild violet. All right. So this trail forms a loop and you go up and to the right a little bit and up there is Box Canyon, and then you come around and you meet back here and go back to where we started. We've got, we've got a little bit before we've got to wrap up, so we'll probably make it up to the top of the hill and maybe a little bit over so you can see some of these spectacular rocks. And that's your sneak preview. If you want to see the rest of the hike, you'll have to come out here and check it out. But um, we'll keep moving. But uh, um, yeah, I've I've been hiking here at Carter Caves for a long time. It's one of my favorites. In fact, when I was a Brownie Girl Scout, uh, I remember coming out here to hike one of the trails. I believe it was Horn Hollow Trail, if I'm remembering right. Uh, that's another good one. It's about a mile and a half, and there was a they were doing something. It was uh, specifically for Girl Scouts. It was like a wildflower photography challenge. And it was around this time of year in April. And the hike we took that day, uh, I remember I submitted some pictures of some trillium, which hope maybe we'll come across. We'll see. And some other wildflowers as well. I didn't win, <laughs> but I had a lot of fun on the hike. I believe they had three finalists and it was Girl Scout troops from all over that came. But it's one of my favorite Girl Scout memories was that hike. So, if you're playing animal detective, maybe you pause and listen for the different bird songs. 
heard a few um, bugs or gnats or something buzzing by. Two, I haven't seen them, but I've heard them. All right, let's keep moving. There's a little bird there. I'm not really sure what bird that is. It looks, I'm over, it looks like it could have been a finch. Small. Um, other wildlife you may see in this area uh, at Carter Caves. And, outside of different bugs and birds. Uh, you may see deer, you may see squirrel. I've been out here, I've seen a skunk out here before. Um, I've seen a fox once. And I've seen a beaver. We're not really close to water here, so we're probably not gonna see any beaver. Check out these yellows. They say there are, well, there are bear here, but I haven't ever seen a bear out here. But um, if the bear that would be out here would be a black bear. And if you were to ever come across a black bear, um, you want to make yourself big and maybe do some jumping jacks just to get loud and tall and that should run them off. And if you ever see a baby bear, no matter how cute it is, leave it alone because mama bear is probably really close by and she's going to want to protect it. All right, we're going to take a breather just for a moment here. Check the time. Okay, we've, we're doing okay. We've got about five minutes left. So this part's pretty hilly. So we're going to go up to the top of the hill here. And from the top of the hill, we're gonna come across a really cool rock formation. So that'll give you a taste of what you can expect if you ever come out here um, to hike Box Canyon Trail. All right, here we go. Yeah, and as you can see up ahead, here's another orange blaze indicating that we are on the right trail. <laughs> Sorry, it's that, that rough start there, that, that gave you <laughs> A little teaser of what not to do. Be paying attention. Always pay attention. Just because you've been out here several times before <laughs> doesn't mean you're going to turn the right way. Look for these blazes. Yeah, this part's pretty steep. But it's a short trail, so that's good. You look around. Check this out. Little baby ferns growing. Ooh. Yeah, look at this ahead. So that's the rock formation we're gonna check out at the top of the hill, but yeah, it's a journey getting there. Now slow down. Now this part's really rocky and rooty. Fell our roots. <laughs> uh, so watch your step. Keep your hands out. If you have a stick or a hiking pole, this would be a good time to use it. But yeah, don't have your hands in your pockets or be reaching for stuff when you're walking uphill on terrain like this because you might hurt yourself. So be aware of your surroundings. So you got big steps here. So yeah, feel free to use your hands to help you. Up. Be careful if it's recently rained. These rocks could be slick. All right. And here we are. This is a spectacular rock shelter. Oh, my favorite in the entire park. And 
Before we end today, I'm going to take you down a tunnel. <laughs> a little tunnel. And it feels like a cave when you walk in. It's a little chilly in here. But yeah, follow me. We'll check out the tunnel. But yeah, it's really narrow that way. But down this way, we're going to walk through and come out the other side. It's a little dark here. I'm going to remove that flashlight from my backpack. Now would be a good time to get out a flashlight if you had one, although this isn't a cave. It gets pretty dark in here. So. All right. It's a little flashlight, but it's a good pocket flashlight to have. So you can kind of check out, look for maybe some bugs, this might be a place you might find something like a spider or a millipede, centipede, something like that. I'd like to see it before it sees me, if you know what I mean. All right, here we go, it gets pretty narrow. Woo. You might have to, yeah, if you've got a backpack on, you might need to remove your backpack and carry it in front of you here. Whew, yeah, it's nice and cool back here. Oh, here we go. Here's the light. And here we are back out in the world. We are going to round the corner so I can give you a sneak peek of Box Canyon because it's right around the corner. And when you get up here and you make it all the way to the back of Box Canyon, that's about the halfway point of this trail. Oh, check out that viewpoint. Look at those rocks. Look at that rock face. It's gorgeous. Okay, beautiful out here. And up here, yeah, this would be really, if you had the equipment, really good rock to uh, climb on. I don't recommend that to, uh, for any beginners or any novices, but yeah, if that was something that you were, yeah, Spe uh, especially trained and especially equipped to do, this would be a good rock for that. But uh, yeah, we're gonna round the corner here. And yeah, you can hear some water up ahead. It's coming off the rocks. This is actually a really good hike to come out in, say, January when um, all the leaves are off the trees. Um, sometimes there's some spectacular icicles. And if it's recently snowed, this, is, this valley is absolutely gorgeous. But you'll still get an idea coming up ahead why it's called Box Canyon. We're going to come to right about here. And from this side to the back, and then I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's like a sharp 90 degree angle over there as the rock side continues, kind of forming in like a three-sided three box. You're just missing that fourth side. So that's why they call it Box Canyon, and it's beautiful all seasons, gorgeous in the fall. I really recommend coming out here uh, for a winter hike, um, as long as you know it's not too icy. But if it's recently snowed and you can get down here, you'll see some beautiful icicles hanging off the edge of the rock face there, and this valley is absolutely gorgeous, covered in snow. And I mentioned trillium earlier. I see one. Let's take a look. I actually see a few, but let's come around. There's one right here. Check that out. So that's a trillium and yeah, the tri and trillium for three, the three petals. So yeah, those are blooming this time of year out here. 
Well, this was a lot of fun and I, yeah, we'll have to do it again sometime. Uh, and if, yeah, if you get out to Carter Caves anytime soon, this is a really terrific trail. I, I recommend it for beginners and, you know, hikers that have hiked, you know, the Appalachian Trail. It has something for everyone. So, um, again, if you uh, want to give some feedback or share any of your hiking stories or places you want to go, um, hashtag Kentucky Girl Scouts, hashtag Kentucky Girl Scouts at home. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and see you guys later.